Oh my gosh, that's a big one. Oh my gosh, it's giant. I got I just got hit by one. Dang it. Got him. Gosh. Fourth cast, baby. Check it out, first fish of the morning. I got bit on my first cast and I missed him. And then I got bit on, again on my fourth cast and I got him. Oh, I am so excited right now. There's one, oh my gosh. That's a better one, that's a better one. They're biting it when I'm reeling my bait just super, super fast. Man, this fish is dogging me. Oh, God. Oh, my gosh. That's a little bit bigger. They're not as big as we normally catch out here. Oh, God. He just cut my finger. Thanks for the fight, fish. That was crazy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> he just flew out of the water. <laughs> oh my gosh. Whoa. I'm telling you guys, these fish hit your bait so hard and they're just so crazy. This guy like flew out of the water. It was nuts. And they fight like crazy. Okay, here we go. Death gas. Come on. Just don't be a 10 pounder. Oh, he's on there instantly. There's a bunch of fish over there. He's a little guy. Up and over, baby. All right. <laughs> that's the craziest thing out here ever. Like that, <laughs> that adrenaline rush of trying to get a fish over that yellow wall is just, it's insane. Like it freaks me out every time. And uh, I always am like, man, why am I doing this? But that's the only place I can catch a fish. I'm gonna keep doing it. That's a little guy, I'm gonna throw him back. And it's just scary when I get a big one, but that's just total chaos. I live for that. I bet I get another one right here. Now I'm bit it so fast, like they're, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, he jumped out of the water. He jumped out of the water. I was saying the fish bit so fast, he must have been competing with his other buddies over there. I'm just fighting so hard. Don't break, Rod. I'm really putting this rod to the test today. Oh no. Oh no. Dang, he got me stuck. Oh god, I missed him. Oh my gosh. That's a good one. That's a good one. Now keep his head up so he doesn't get stuck.
We got him. I'm getting slimy today. Woo. That's a big one. <laughs> Five pounder over the ridge. Oh gosh, I wish I had some gloves. My hands are cut. I had to get that. I had to get you guys off my chest because the camera was in the way of my my torquing power. My reel was getting off in the way. Y'all weren't able to see what was going on. So this should give you a better look at what's going on and the madness that is ensuing on the other side of this yellow retainer barrier. Oh my gosh. He just stripped my swim bait off. It's it's crazy. These fish are supercharged up. The water's warm. I'm not sure if that's giving them some extra fighting power or not, but I like to think that it is because they're wearing me out. I've already got several little battle wounds accumulating on my hands, and I've only, I think I've only caught five fish. I've got three in the boat. I got three good ones. I got three fish over four pounds. I got one that's probably six. The other one, they're, they're probably got a six and two fives, to be honest with you guys. And that's what I'm after. That's dead. That's dead. I told him. Oh my god. It takes everything I have to get them, get their heads up. These fish are so crazy. It's so hard to get a hand on them. Wow, that's another good one. That's another like four pounder. I told you guys, if I land in that one spot every time, it's just it's just game over. It's game over. I hope you bite like this all day long. Oh gosh, you just gotta give them a hug, control them, pop that jig head out. Oh, this is no joke. Okay, I'm gonna slide him underneath my boat seat here and then I'm gonna get him all strung up here in a minute. Trying to make sure we get our limits. I'm sure Jay's got four or five over there. I've got four. I really haven't hit my sweet spot in the last couple of casts. Oh my gosh, that's a good, oh my gosh. That's a good one. Yeah. I love it. This rod here is a freaking beast. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> wow. Just wow. Look at that fish. It's another good one. That's a four pounder for sure. And he just took me straight to the bank, hit it so hard. God, I love fishing. I love fishing so much. Okay, let me slide him under. I think I only need one more. Once I get one more, I'm done. I'm done keeping them. So I'll show you what I'm throwing. <laughs> I'm just throwing a, a swim bait. I lost my uh, my last good jig head. I've been using those Six Cents Divine Screw Lock jig heads. They're the best jig head you can use in just about any open water jig head swim bait situation because they have a screw lock. But I lost it earlier on that yellow retainer wall, which was really lame. But I've got this just plain generic white jig head saving my butt right now because I don't even know if I have any more jig heads. To be honest, I wasn't planning on losing any. That's that's a that's a bad move on my part, but it's got a stout hook, and like I said, it's on a white swim bait. They'll eat about any swim bait, I think, but white stands out. They see it and they smoke it. I missed it. You see, this is the issue I'm having. See, that doesn't happen with the screw lock jig head. Those six cents divine screw lock jig heads, that doesn't happen. Oh my gosh, that's a big one. Oh my gosh, it's a giant. That's a giant. I don't know, let me get this one. 
Hook's about to pop right out. Look at the size of that one. I just flipped a six and a half pounder over the top of that yellow retainer wall. Holy crap, look how big that fish is. Woo -hoo. I think this is number six. Gosh, I think it's number six. Popped right out, guys. <laughs> Kevin put him on the string. I'm gonna put all these guys on the stringer and so not have to worry about it anymore. And now I'm just gonna get back to fishing. Who's running to me? Here we go. Nice fish. I wish I wish I knew if I should be keeping these fish, but I think Cole's catching some. I think Cole has a stringer, but I do not. So <sighs> letting him go. There's one. Oh my gosh. Now I know I say this like every time, but this might be a better one. <laughs> Ow. Golly. Golly. Oh yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah, that's a better one. Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh. <sighs> now, y'all don't make fun of my landing technique. <laughs> There's the biggest one in the morning so far. Hopefully we'll keep catching them this size and bigger. I really want to keep this fish. I don't know what to do. I don't have anywhere to put him. I'm just gonna have to let him go. <sighs> Man, I'm just having a blast well it's so crazy that you can go from catching them every cast and then it's just dead the bite is dead but we are so glad that we came out here first thing this morning and caught a bunch of fish caught some big ones too and they were mean they were supercharged yeah they were fighting like crazy today i don't know what was going on with them but i loved it <laughs> <laughs> and um cole's cole's caught some pretty good ones i didn't keep mine i didn't know i was supposed to be keeping them how do you, how do you not know you're not supposed <laughs> to be keeping them <laughs> cole thought i had my limit and i was like dude i thought you were keeping my limit for me because i didn't really have anywhere to put them but i guess i could have put them on my my anchor rope like i was doing <laughs> or underneath your seat that's all right we're gonna <laughs> head in we just had this boat pass by on some wakes we're waking in our kayaks right now it's fine it's a wavy Woo! ride <laughs> but uh we're gonna head back into the truck and uh we'll see you guys there Okay, we made it back home and Brittany is watching Cole clean the fish. What you think about that, Brittany? Those are some big old fish, aren't they? <laughs> they're almost as big as you, but they're not quite as fat. <laughs> yeah, we're just cleaning these fish up, trying out, trying out the new knife that we got from Miss Brenda on these bigger fish. It's cutting pretty good. I'm impressed. <laughs> Finally 
finally made it to our favorite time of the day where we are going to be preparing some of these striper for dinner. Okay, so I cleaned them up, got them all washed up, and we're actually going to be preparing them in a way we've never featured on the channel. We're gonna be turning this striper into poor man's lobster. So basically, all you gotta do, you're just gonna cut the striper up in these little cubes, or you can cut them into strips however you want to. I'm just dicing them up into cubes just because the fillet is kind of weird and separates in half anyways. As you can see, kind of like this, it just kind of just falls apart in the middle, which makes it awesome for dicing up these little cubes. And then all you're going to do is you're just going to add your your crab boil, just basically like you're having a, a crawfish boil or a crab boil. Just add this crab concentrate here. I'm add a little bag of crab boil seasoning. I've got some cayenne in here. I don't have an actual, just regular standalone cayenne pepper shaker, but we got this little cayenne here. And I think that's all we're gonna do. We'll give a little salt, a little salt. But basically we're gonna boil this all together in a little potato. And where's our corn at? We have potatoes and corn and uh, boil it all together. The fish is gonna cook really, really quickly. So we're actually gonna cook the corn and potatoes first. And then we're gonna melt some butter. Then we're just gonna dip those little cubes of striper meat right into the butter and the taste, almost, if not identical, to lobster tail. I'm excited, this water's boiling almost, we're almost there. I need to go ahead and pour some of this in there. You don't want too much of this though, this stuff is strong, but we want it hot. We want it nice and good and spicy. I'm gonna go ahead and just put this in there. So we're gonna go on ahead and get this water seasoned up. We're gonna bring it to a boil. We're gonna add our potatoes and corn to our pot. And then once that gets pretty much cooked, we're gonna add the striper. And that's only gonna take like two or three minutes to cook. And then we're gonna let it soak in all the juiciness, all the flavor, and then we're gonna eat. It's gonna be awesome. While we were waiting on our crab boil mixture to kind of get back to boiling again, we were over here checking out our little tadpole tank right here. Remember this, guys? Our little tadpole tank. And we had one tadpole that's still just still pretty big, our big bullfrog tadpole, and he's got some little tiny legs developing, but we had our other tadpole, and uh, he's grown all four limbs, and his tail has been shrinking every day, and we just looked in there for the first time today. And uh, Jay has got Look at it. little, is that Timmy or Tammy? This is Timmy. This is Timmy? Timmy grew up way too fast. Yeah, Timmy grew up really, really, really fast. Look at him. Timmy has fully undergone metamorphosis and he is ready to be released back into the lake. What an awesome little frog. Okay, so I'm gonna go put him back in the lake because that's where he's meant to be. Cute little frog. <laughs> Bye, Timmy. We'll see you Bye. later. Okay, I don't know if fried okra goes with poor man's lobster, but I saw some okra in the freezer and I just had to fry it up. So, voila, it's gonna be good. Finally, after 40 minutes of preparing this dinner, we are finally here hanging out, eating. We got Jessica's parents back here. Mom's working the camera. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're about to do our first taste test. Well, probably our second taste test. We had to make sure it was any good, but we're gonna do a taste test for you guys on camera. So here it is basically, just that cubed up striper meat off the filet. And you're just gonna dip it right into the butter, just like you would a piece of crab meat or lobster. Are you ready, Jay? Mm-hmm. Mm. It literally tastes like lobster, guys. That's good. I mean, mm. That's as close to a lobster as you can get in Arkansas. <laughs> I guess unless you buy one in Kroger. <laughs> That's awesome. That's delicious. Okay, let's do a potato. The okra is amazing. Mm, wow, okay. that was really hot. <laughs> Take a bite spi of corn. We spiced it up good. Okay. I know the corns would be really, really spicy. I mean, I let it soak in that boiling water for like 30 or 40 minutes, so it should be really good. I did a good job. <laughs> That's really, really good. I hate whenever we like, do a, a crab boil and it kind of gets kind of weak. It's not really seasoned up and you can't really taste it. You're like, dang, I wish I had more on there. That's really good. I think that slappy mama is really kicking in also. I think I'm starting to like get hot and sweaty. <laughs>
Well, that's awesome. Okay, we're gonna put the camera down. We're gonna enjoy this time together. We're gonna eat dinner. What do you think, Mom? It's just like lobster. Mmm, it's good. What do you think, Dad? It's it's delicious. Yeah. Dad is a proud supporter of Colin J. Look at that shirt. Awesome. <laughs> <gasps> Brittany, what are you thinking? Brittany's like, oh my goodness, it smells so good. She almost jumped up here. Brittany likes Cajun food. You that crab boil, Brittany? We'll have to add some to your water bowl. <laughs> Don't even think about it, Buggy. Buggy. You're a good girl, Buggy. Well, it's the next day, and last night's dinner was a success. It was so good. Yeah, the poor man's lobster actually kind of put us in a food coma, so... That's we why we're here today. Live more last night. Yeah, I think that was like my best batch of poor man's lobster I've ever made. And the best part of that was that her folks enjoyed it a lot. So that's a big thumbs up in our book. But anyways, guys, we just wanted to touch base with y'all real quick before we sign out today's video. We wanted to let you guys in on the gear we were throwing to catch those big striper. So both of us, Jay and I, were throwing the Six Sense Lux Series rod from Six Sense. It's an awesome rod. These are two heavier powered rods. It's the seven six heavy, Mine's and hers seven, is two, extra heavy. Yeah, the seven two extra heavy, like big old you know beefy sticks <laughs> to just corral and manhandle those striper. For me, having a really strong and powerful rod was really important because I was having to cast over that two foot retainer wall and flip those five to seven pound striper right over it, and that's crazy. For me, it was like a true testament to like how strong this rod really is because I mean there's not a lot of rods out there that you can use to flip a giant striper you know two feet in the air over a retainer wall and then flip them into your boat that's crazy that's wild luckily for Jay she got to fish that area where she didn't have to flip them and so she got she got the good in the deal but that's all right I think my fish were a little bit bigger than the one yeah, she was they catching were. They were. and I'm down with that <laughs> I'll flip a big old striper over wall any day if it means I'm catching big fish and then the lure we were throwing to catch those striper, we were throwing just these pearl colored Berkeley Power Swimmer swim baits, a good swim bait to use just for all sorts of fishing applications. And then the money maker really is this jig head. I didn't get to fish the jig head today because this was actually our, our last one. No, I had one. I had one too. We both had one and I lost mine. It got stuck on the yellow wall. It made me so mad. <laughs> Anyways, the thing about this jig head is that it's a screw lock. So you can literally screw your swim bait right onto the jig head and it stays in place for a ton of fish catches. I mean, the bait's gonna break right here at the hook before it breaks the nose, mm -hmm. which you know is like really rare in a swim bait jig head. Like you saw in the video, I was using a different swim bait jig head and I was constantly having to push that swim bait back on the jig head and like bite the end of my swim bait off and just keep putting it on there and it was really, really annoying. I didn't have to adjust mine once. Yeah, so that's what's so awesome about this six cent screw lock jig head. So I greatly recommend this jig head. If you haven't used it before, I definitely suggest you try them out. And if you would like to try out some of these six cents Lux rods we're throwing today, there's only a few of them left in stock on the site. So I talked to Casey on the phone yesterday. He said that they're gonna be getting a new batch of these Lux rods in August. So if you wanna get a seven six heavy action, Lux rod, do you better do it now. Okay, we're, we're gonna link the website below in our description and you can also pick up some of these jig heads or anything else you see on the site you like. It's gonna be, you're probably gonna be really tempted when you get on the site because everything on there looks so good and everything on the website catches big fish. And if you use our code CJ10, you can yeah. actually get 10% off your order. Yeah, so that's like, what, like 15, 20 bucks off a rod? For doing nothing, that's just awesome. punching a code in. That's awesome. And then you can use that 15, 20 bucks and buy a couple of baits. Do it. Sick. <laughs> well, that is going to be it for today's video. We hope you guys enjoyed our striper catching cook. And if you did, be sure to hit the like button for us. Big thumbs up, guys. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We are so, so close, close to our 30,000 subscriber goal. And uh, it, it would make our whole entire month, make our year, if we could reach that milestone by the end of this month. We're so close. I think we're like, what, 500 away? Mm -hmm. 500 away from 30,000. We, we can't do it without you guys. So be sure to share this video with all your friends. And if you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe button. And also, if you want to, you can hit the post notification bell and you'll always know when we upload our videos. But thanks again for watching. We're, We're going, Jay. And we will see you on the next episode. Bye. Bye.